We got some data yesterday that seems to suggest that actually mixing and matching is a good thing. That if you've had AstraZeneca or a J and J, getting a Pfizer shot has a really big impact. Yeah, so the, the study yesterday complements what we've already seen from the UK. The UK had uh, two separate studies that reported, focused on the AstraZeneca shot, with, uh, followed by Pfizer shot, because those are the ones that we are using mostly here. And that was only two doses. So one dose of Astra, one dose of Pfizer, 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 Astra. And the best was a dose of Astra followed by Pfizer. Now what we got yesterday from the US was, well, what about Moderna? What about Johnson & Johnson? Remember, it's one dose. So, of course, what ended up being the case is that when you look at antibody levels, if you give an mRNA vaccine, a Moderna or a Pfizer, to a um, person who had one dose of J&J, uh, &J, they get much better antibody levels than if you just gave them a second shot of J&J. &J. Now, timelines, you need to wait maybe a bit longer for J&J. &J. Yeah. Whatever the answer is, this seems better. But, Sam, if I'm not mistaken, what you're talking about is a traditional kind of vaccine and then your mRNA as that booster. What happens if you already got an mRNA? How do you mix and match? Yeah, so the, in, for that study, they, they did have a group of people who had either the Moderna or the Pfizer or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. In the two groups who had the Moderna or the Pfizer, uh, whatever vaccine you gave them, they got a pretty good boost. Obviously, Moderna, because it's three times the dose that of Pfizer, gives a much bigger boost. Um, but in fact, what I think is when you look at the totality of the data, remember, vaccines also need to be safe. Nobody wants a vaccine if they get knocked out for two days every time that they take it. And the Pfizer-BioNTech was the safest of the lot in that uh, study. Mm. In terms of what is happening next, we're trying to figure out what happens with kids. In the United States, Alex is very interested in finding out what happens with 5 to 12s. Uh, I've just had my 12-year-old uh, given a shot of the Pfizer. Now, in the UK, it's quite a small dose that they're giving, uh, and the rollout seems uh, to be um, a little disorganised, let's be polite about it at the moment. Nevertheless, how quickly should we expect an impact in terms of the cases in schools as a result of starting this process? Because at the moment, it seems there's a lot of COVID in the UK, but it's mainly centred within that age group. Yeah, I think if you really want to see an effect in terms of infections, then you're going to get into the 50, 60, 70% range again with this uh, vaccine. You can't just have um, one dose in 20% of the kids and everything starts looking great, because it's not enough. The virus will find the other 80%. The virus will find the other 30% if you've got up to 70 But then, of course, you get that multiplier effect where you get the so-called herd immunity and you don't get, um, you don't get transmission that easily. Um, so, Sam, based on that, how do you think the case count for schools in the UK is going to evolve? Um, it seems like there's no mask wearing when they're older. Um, cases are really rising. What's that, how's that going to play out? Well, I mean, frankly, uh, Alex, I think what's going to happen is that they're either going to get the vaccine or they're going to get infected. So, um, so in the next few months, if this carries on as it is, you will see a peak again, which is what happens. Every time you look at the, the virus, look at the United States, everywhere is kind of calming down in terms of case counts. So I think that's exactly what will happen. Immunity will set in, unfortunately, in a lot of cases because of an infection rather than a vaccine. Does it matter in that age group? as much we we are we're, we're finding ourselves in a situation where behavior is is now in the uk and elsewhere starting to get back to normal like certainly that's just anecdotal experience uh, of what is going on around me does it matter now that we do have these cases in this lower age group in terms of the way that this is going to progress this is the final group that's going to get vaccinated it's the final group it seems that it, that is getting COVID in large numbers but actually as a tail, this is something that we can manage relatively easily. Should we be concerned, therefore, as we watch the numbers on a daily basis, that they are still elevated, or should we be basically saying, you know what, this is in an age group where largely it doesn't matter? So, Guy, if you're thinking about hospitalizations or death, which is uh, one I'm way to avoid about both it. of those things, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, of course. But if you think about just those very awful outcomes, then obviously younger folks don't, don't get as a, uh, a bad response to the virus. The problem is you have long COVID. You have the fact that they get knocked out of school for 10 days and everybody around them. So there is a sociological school, whatever you want, educational, everything aspect to this. So the better the protected they are, the less disruption to everything around them yep. and risk of long COVID is important.